when I first found the money tree, I couldn't believe my eyes. I had no idea yet of the pain and horror it would bring about. If I had, I would have turned around and walked straight away in the opposite direction. But I didn't, of course. It drew me in like the mirage of an oasis in the desert. It was about the size of an apple tree. But instead of growing fruit, it was growing crisp $20 bills. The green paper fluttered in the breeze, and I wandered over to it as if in a dream. The tree was far out in the forest, where nobody ever went. But still, I felt immediately as if eyes were on me, watching me as I inspected it. The hair stood up on the back of my neck, telling me someone was spying. But when I looked around, I couldn't see anybody. There were $20 bills scattered in the grass all around the tree, stuck in the branches of the neighboring ones as well. But the other trees weren't like it. This was the only money tree around, at least as far as I could tell. My mind grappled with it, trying to decide if I was dreaming. I pinched my arm as hard as I could and felt a sharp sting of pain. Nope, not dreaming. This was real. Whatever magic had summoned this thing up from the ground, there was no sign of its origins. Only the tree itself. A miracle, as far as I could tell. I had been desperately broke lately. My wife and I had been struggling to pay the bills, and I quickly realized that this tree could solve all of our problems. There had to be thousands of dollars scattered all around, and all I had to do was collect them up from the ground. So I took off my sweatshirt and made it into a makeshift bundle, stooping down and stuffing bills inside of it as quickly as I could. After only a few moments, I heard the sound of someone's soft footsteps on the grass nearby, and looked up as they were clearing their throat. Oh, I said. I'm sorry, is this your tree? The fact that this tree should not exist at all seemed to hang in the air between us, the words left unspoken. It's nobody's tree. This tree and this forest are as much mine as they are yours. And that is to say they belong to no one. I breathed a sigh of relief. He wasn't going to try to stop me. I stooped down and began to stuff bills into the shirt bag, feeling oddly self-conscious now as he watched me. My eyes darted up at him occasionally, watching him cautiously, but the man just stood there with his arms crossed. Can I give you a piece of advice? Looking up again, I took a few seconds to actually take in the man's appearance. He was dressed in ragged, earth-colored clothing, with holes in the elbows and knees of his brown pants and long coat. His beard was overgrown and flecked with gray, full of twigs and leaves and other debris, making me think that this forest was, in fact, this man's home. He reminded me of someone, and I realized I was thinking of Radagast, the brown wizard from Lord of the Rings, who could speak to animals and could change his shape. It wasn't until much later that I realized the aptness of that comparison. Sure, I said carefully, not wanting to upset this odd, disheveled stranger. Don't pick the bills off the tree itself. The ones on the ground are fair game. You can take those home and she won't mind one bit. They fall off, they're yours. But do not take from the tree what is still growing from it. It is important that you understand this. I was already looking at the ground again, stuffing cash in my makeshift sack, only half listening, really. But I said, okay, no problem, just to get him to leave me alone. It worked. When I looked up again, he was gone. I filled up the shirt and my pants pockets, my shoes, and any other place I could think of to carry the cash. Once I got back home, I told my wife we were going to be okay that everything was finally going to be okay. But, strangely enough, it wasn't. I lost my job and had to apply for unemployment the very next day, cancelling out any gains from the money tree. The layoffs were completely unexpected, and thus we were unable to prepare ourselves for the consequences. Everyone I worked with was devastated. The company had just folded overnight, and the owner decided it was too awkward and embarrassing to tell everyone. 
Uh, so we all went home one night thinking everything was fine. Came back the next day to find the place shuttered. A sign on the door simply read closed, and the owners wouldn't pick up the phone when we called. My pink slip came in the mail later that day, and I read it as if dreaming, thinking to myself, cowards. What a bunch of cowards they are. Why couldn't they just tell us the truth? Anyways, despite the loss of a steady paycheck and health benefits, I was slightly less upset than everyone else because I knew I had the money tree to go back to. The thought briefly occurred to me that I, I should share the secret with a few people from work, but I quickly decided against it. There was only so much cash to go around. Not to mention, I had begun to feel a sort of jealous ownership of the tree, despite the fact that the creepy bearded man in brown always watched me while I collected my money. Every time I went back, there was a little less cash on the ground, and the remaining bills were in worse and worse condition, being the ones I left behind time and time again. I started to collect those dregs, ripped and soaked in mud, only barely usable. Finally, one time I went back and saw the ground only had a few bills fluttering around on it. I snatched them up quickly and grabbed a couple more that had snagged on nearby branches. But my pockets were still so empty, and there were only the bills growing on the tree remaining. I looked around and saw the man in brown was nowhere to be seen. He was gone for once, but still I felt oddly as if he were watching me, waiting for me to break his rules. But what could he possibly do if I did? There was no choice. I didn't have enough money for rent or for the car insurance bill. And not to mention the overdue credit cards, cell phone bills, and utilities. My hand reached up and felt one of the bills on the tree, tugging on it ever so gently. It wouldn't come free. I pulled harder and harder, but still, it wouldn't let go of it. I tried a different bill and found the same thing happened. It was firmly fastened to the tree. That was when I got desperate. I pulled out my pocket knife and flicked it from its closed position, then began to saw at the connection between tree and $20 bill. The blade sliced through quickly enough, and I inspected it in my hand. More or less normal, except for a slightly deformed edge on the corner, where the knife had raggedly cut through. It was like a pimple on the green, flat surface of the bill, still oozing a white, sap-like substance. I touched my finger to it and sniffed it, inspecting it. It didn't smell good. A bit like the smell of glue and rotting wood. And it was sticky. I couldn't get it off my finger. The sap was tenacious and got all over everything it touched. Still, I needed more money. I cut down more $20 bills and heaped them into my pockets, being careful not to touch the white sap after the first time. Still, it managed to get everywhere, and by the time I was done, I was covered in the stuff. It seemed like it was multiplying. I turned around and was startled to see a deer a little ways off in the trees watching me. Its eyes seemed to judge me, as it chewed on some unidentifiable greenery in its mouth. I needed it, I said self-consciously, more to myself than to anyone else. I'm sorry. The tree stood half bare and sad-looking when I glanced back at it, but I tried not to think about it too much as I stomped back through the forest towards my home. My first stop was at the ATM machine, where I would deposit the money into my account, thus allowing my bills to be paid electronically. It was practically impossible to pay bills with cash these days, after all. The funny thing was, the ATM didn't accept the bills, even though it always had before. The machines no longer used an envelope, but instead took the bills and counted them directly. As a result, with the sticky white sap leaking out from the bills, it caused the machine to jam up. I tore the bills out from the cash deposit slot and felt my face get hot as I turned around and apologized to the other bank customers waiting in line. The machine's screen was now flashing red, saying, Error, please see customer service, and my card was stuck inside of it. After several hours at the bank, trying to explain why my cash looked so strange and seemed to be leaking sticky white fluid in places, they eventually accepted it with weary looks on their faces. I received an ominous warning that if the bills turned out to be fake, I would be in a lot of trouble. I drove home from the bank with a heavy heart and a guilty conscience. 
That night, I took a long, hot shower, trying desperately to get that sticky sap off my hands from all the bills. But even after an hour of scrubbing, I was still finding it in places after I dried off. The stuff was more than tenacious. It was inescapable. After a restless night's sleep, I awoke to find myself covered in the sap. It was stretching out in strands which connected my limbs to the rest of my body whenever I moved. My heart was pounding hard in my chest and my hands were shaking as I turned on the shower to the highest heat possible and climbed in, scalding my skin and not caring as I tried to scrub it all off. Some of the sap went down the drain, but most of it stayed on me, and I realized with increasing terror that I was now covered in the white, oozing pimple spots like the ones on the bills I had cut from the tree. They were leaking the sap all over me, and it was running over my skin in rivulets. This leaking sap was quickly drying off and hardening like magma from a volcano, turning my flesh crispy and hard in places. There was only one thing I could think to do. I ran back out to the forest as fast as my legs would carry me, racing back to the money tree. I had to talk to the man in the woods, the, the protector of the tree. He would tell me what to do. The run back to the place where the tree was became more and more difficult as I went. Sap was leaking steadily from the oozing wounds on my skin and hardening, making my flesh feel as if it were turning into stone. My fear turned to dread when I came into the clearing and found the money tree. It looked much different now than when I had first discovered it. The branches were withering and decayed, snapping off in places and looking rotten and hollow inside. Millipedes went in and out of pockmarks in the trunk, and the whole thing looked like it could collapse at any moment. The few remaining bills left upon it were yellowed and riddled with holes, unusable. A loud roar came from behind me suddenly, and I spun around to see a huge brown bear standing up on its back legs. I stared up at it and watched terrified as it started to speak in a low, rumbling voice. You were chosen as a representative of your kind. The forest gave you a test, and you have failed. Do you have anything to say for yourself? I went down on my knees with an effort, raising my hands in a prayer-like pose up to him, pleading with him. Yes, help me, please. I'm sorry, it was a mistake. He shook his head at me as he frowned, no remorse or compassion to be seen on his face. Roots began spreading out from my feet, planting me there and further preventing my escape. From the white, leaking places where the white postules had been, small buds were beginning to poke out and open, bursting through my skin with agonizing, excruciating pain. Become one with nature, said the bear. I screamed, but no sound came out. Become a channel member today for early access, bonus videos, and special emojis only available to members. Check out the description below or click the join button for more info. Today's video was supported by patrons like Mark from Earth. Crimson Muse, Joy Burton, Diane Showers, Mark Zawal, Cheryl James, Pick Your Sticker, Teddy Dog, Glue 404, Mamacato, Dante Kincaid, Zarin Ray, Angela Donovan, Larry Ann 50, Devin Kyle, Timothy Baird, Ajeti, Bert Turner, Bajani Aspinall, Michael Pierce, Big Joe, Carrie Harkonnen, LaDonna Spivey, Scott Tanaka, Tom Stewart, Sherman Davis, Bryce Shelton, Susan McClendon, Elise Batisse, Lisa and the Cult Jam, Open Circuit, Fabulavore, Raymond Jaggers, That Darn Fox, Raison Detra, Kai Gaming 99, Wendy Burns, The Wendigo, Michael Squishy Park, The Gem Star, Vault 77 Citizen, Puppy Dan, Clovis Wolf, Elder Jelm, Derek Prey, Elder Being, KC Hawaii, Rob T., Tragic Mermaid, Darren Fishnaller, Cloves and Harris, Roe Underwood, Florida Man Luke, Bethany's Mom, Winter's Kiss, Sam Brooke, The White Stag, Corgi Connection, No Name, Marta Cara, Professor Elm, Kathy Barrickman, Cybard Sands, Steve Hennessy, 
Melanie Sanders, The Archivist, Rob Smith, Term 4, Naz Razio, J. David Wellman Jr., Parker Lewis, Monica Moya, and DMaster311. If you'd like to help support the channel, please consider joining my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Jordan Group Horror. As a patron, you get access to bonus videos and content. You'll be credited at the end of every video going forward. And if you decide to stay for three months, I'll name a character after you which will be featured in a Hollow's End story. Links to join the Patreon are in the description. Thanks everyone for listening. Please like, subscribe, and comment to help the channel continue to grow. It really does help out a lot. And see you again next time at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.